Welcome Heath in just a moment. God's given him a word for tonight. We were blessed last time. There ain't no camera right in the lane. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we were blessed last time. And um, man, I just it's a great thing to be able to see God using people, especially uh, the generation coming up and speaks through. And I've heard people say before, oh, when somebody's learning, I don't want to hear them speak, I, you know, things like that. But man, that's when you see the Holy Spirit working in just a fresh and a new way, and it's a beautiful thing. So um, he doesn't want us to, but we'll give a hand to Heath as he comes up and shares a word to us. Thank you. Ooh, how's everybody doing? Who? good. Good deal. I'm good, thanks. <clears throat> well, this is the second time doing this, so everybody just bear with me. I'm a little more nervous than I was the first time. Uh, excuse me, I have a little bit of a cold, so just look over me, or just look at me, I guess. <laughs> I am a handsome man. <laughs> uh, all right, moving forward. Uh, I wanted to, about a, two months ago, the pastor asked me if I wanted to speak again, and I was like, oh man, I guess so. <laughs> Just not my forte yet, I guess. But I accepted, and then a couple, I'd say about a week or so later, <clears throat> I had, uh, I was reading my Bible, and uh, I was reading in Acts, I can't remember where it was. But I just felt like I was, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me and told me that I needed to speak on the Holy Spirit. Uh, and then I was talking to Mom. I was like, whew, I really, I don't want to speak on the Holy Spirit because that's pretty deep stuff there. Uh, but I was just like, uh, maybe God will tell me something else to speak on. And I just... Kept putting it off, putting it off, and just like just kept pushing on me. You speak on the Holy Spirit. I was like, "All right, well, I'll just dive in head first, I guess. Here we go." <clears throat> so, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. He's the third person of the Trinity. There's the Father, the Son, and then the Holy Spirit. So, if you want to turn to John 14. Read 16 through 17. Are <clears throat> we ready? Verse 16, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit, point number one, the Holy Spirit is an advocate or comforter or an encourager or a counselor. And 1 Corinthians says, you don't have to turn there, 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So the natural man does not receive things from the Holy Spirit. So we have three types of people. You have a natural man who is not a Christian. He has himself first, puts himself first. Then we have a spiritual man, which he is a Christian. He lives a Christ-centered life, living in uh, is a spirit-filled lives in the spirit-filled life, and allows Jesus to direct and empower their life. Then we have the carnal man, which is also a Christian, but is not spirit-filled, and he does not allow Jesus to direct or rely on own effort to our own Christian life. I know a lot of times I have a hard time doing things. I try to do things on my own. Just try living carnally. I know we shouldn't, but we are human. We all sin daily. 
But we need to live the spiritual life, always allowing Jesus to direct us in every aspect of our lives, putting him first in everything we do. <clears throat> so if you want to turn to John 16, 8. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sins and of righteousness and of judgment. So the Holy Spirit convicts of sin. So you know that feeling you get when you're doing something and you just get that feeling in your stomach, just like, ah, this just doesn't feel right. Well, to me, I feel like that's the Holy Spirit telling you, you know, you don't need to be doing that. Like, say, you're driving down the road doing 70 miles an hour, and you're just like, ah, I probably shouldn't be going this fast. So you slow down. Uh, about 55, just cruising around. And then up ahead, you see there's a huge car crash up ahead. And you're like, man, if I was going as fast as I was before, man, that would have probably been me. So a lot of times it's the Holy Spirit trying to either protect you from things that could ha happen or is just telling you that, uh, son, you're a dummy, you don't need to be doing that. But either way, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And you need to be have your ears open to hear what he has to say. <laughs> All right. John sixteen thirteen. So stay there on the same page. A couple verses down. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So the Holy Spirit guides us in the truth of God's Word. He doesn't, the Holy Spirit doesn't tell us what he thinks is right. The Holy Spirit tells us things that God is telling him for us. <coughs> Excuse me. First uh, John 5, 6 says, This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness, because the Spirit is truth. So the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, bears witness for everything. And he, tells, and he is the truth. He is witness of what Jesus is telling him. And it's like in the courtroom, uh, you know, they always call up a witness uh, and like to tell the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, right? So that's what the Holy Spirit does. He tells nothing but the truth because it's what Jesus is telling him for us. Um, so Acts 1.8 X 1.8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So the Holy Spirit gives you power to witness. So I know a lot of times when you're out, say in public or anywhere, and you feel like you see somebody and you're like, I need to witness to that guy or that woman or whoever, but you're too shy. But then it's like something comes over you and it's like, it gives you the words and the knowledge to actually witness to that person. That's the Holy Spirit empowering you with peace and understanding of God's love. And you just have to be open to that. And don't be afraid, which I know is hard, because I know I get afraid, just like today. <laughs> But you just have to trust God to do what He has for you and to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to witness or whatever else He wants you to do. <clears throat> um, so 1 Corinthians 6, 
19. That's not it. First Corinthians six nineteen says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So the Holy Spirit lives inside all believers. So first Corinthians three sixteen and seventeen, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy. Which, which temple you are. So your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in the temple. So your body is the temple. So you have to take care of that temple. It's just like going to the gym every day, working out, ah, bench pressing, doing some curls. You're working out your physical body, getting in shape, running, doing whatever. But you also have to work out your spiritual man. As much or more, which is what we need to be doing, than your physical body. Because your spirit man, truthfully, is more important than your physical body. I mean, although you do need to keep your physical body up and healthy, um, your spirit man needs to be strong. He needs to be Mr. Olympia up there, ugh, strutting his stuff. <laughs> So you got to take care of the temple for the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah. Um, Romans eight sixteen. Romans 8.16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So the Holy Spirit tells us things all the time. He's constantly telling us things daily. But we aren't always open or coherent, I guess might be the word, uh, to hear what he's telling us. Because we, like, a, a lot of the times, we have busy schedules, and we're just constantly going and going and going and going. But we have to stay open, keep your, like, we have to be the spiritual man, have Christ first in our lives, have to have him, have Jesus Leading us daily. We can't be leading our lives on our own. It doesn't work that way. We're going to be walking in circles or walking completely backwards. We have to have allow Jesus to lead us down the straight and narrow path. On the path to righteousness. Leading straight towards God. That's, how, that's the path we have to go. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> that's... That's what he wants us to do, because we are, we are Christians. And Christian is little Christ. We are to be like Christ. That's what he wants, because God loves us. He wants us to love him back. So we need to be open to him to tell us to lead, to live in his will for us and our lives. So Jesus, we thank you for this evening, God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord. We just pray that we live in the Holy Spirit every day, God. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, Lord. Help us to live the way you want us to live, God, in your will, day in and day out, God. When we wake up through the day as we go to bed, God, always in your will, Lord. God, lead us, guide us, 
protect us every day, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins, Lord, shedding your blood for us to allow us to go to heaven and spend eternity with you, God. God, we can't thank you enough for everything you've done for us. There's no amount of anything we can do to equal to what you've done for us, God. Lord, we love you. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, God. Overflow us, Lord. As we're a cup, God, just continue to pour in us, Lord. Never stopping, God. Because you are the living water, Lord. Once we drink your water, Lord, we never thirst again, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give a hand for Heath, if you would. Now I'm going to ask everybody just to kind of just bow your heads, close your eyes right where you are. We're going to take a little time to let the Holy Spirit speak to us. Now, he spoke to us through Heath, and right now, give us a time to respond. And I just want to want you to kind of just spend a little time with the Lord. Lord, just speak to us and let us know the areas that we need your Holy Spirit to come into our lives more fully, Lord. We don't need your Holy Spirit to invade us. Lord God, you indwell us. We love that, Lord. We thank you that we can be that temple of the Holy Spirit. And in this house today, Lord, help us to respond by thinking of areas we can rededicate ourselves to being more sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Lord, maybe there's some of us here that we welcome that convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we think about conviction as being something bad, but it really isn't at all. It's like pain warns us that impending bad things can be happening to us. Pain warns us to take our hands off the burner. Uh, pain warns us to slow down and be safer. So today, Lord God, across this house, there are some of us that, that are saying to you, Father, I welcome that conviction power of the Holy Spirit that keeps me walking the way I should. Maybe you're here and I'm not going to single you out. Maybe you just say, you know, I, I want that conviction power. It doesn't mean I I want to sin doesn't mean I want to uh, stray away from the Lord. It means I want any time my mind even goes in a direction it shouldn't. I want that conviction of the Holy Spirit to just come the way a father or mother would would just say to a child, don't run out in the street, just be careful. Would you just slip your hand up and slip it down? If you say, I rededicate myself to feeling that conviction power of the Holy Spirit. I see that across here. Father, we thank you that you're a convicting Father. You're the one who chastens, Lord, because you love us. You rebuke us because you love us. And Father, the same way if we teach our kids not to go out in the street or to not touch a hot stove, there are things you do to keep us away from sin, Lord God. And we thank you for that. And in this house across here, Lord God, there are some of us that need to rededicate ourselves to allowing the Holy Spirit to help us as we study God's Word. Heath has brought so many different things forward that the Holy Spirit does for us. So maybe here today, some of us are thinking, man, I need the Holy Spirit more when I read. I don't want to read in the flesh. I don't want to read by my academic mind as much. I want the Holy Spirit to bring the Word alive. And I just want you to wave at me if you just feel the Word alive because of the Holy Spirit when you study. Just wave at me. And maybe you're here and you say, I want to feel that. I, I want to rededicate myself to when I'm studying the Word, not just reading it, uh, just to read it, but to read it to feel that living Word. Just wave at me if you're rededicating yourself to letting the Holy Spirit speak to you while you, you do that. And I know Heath, even as he was speaking to us, he was learning that beautiful thing that I know many of the teachers here know and speakers know where that God speaks to you while you're speaking. Man, wouldn't that be beautiful if we learned to do that in every day in our life? Uh, the next thing is just that, that Holy Spirit that just guides us. We thank you, Lord. We need your guidance. Sometimes we can drift through this life and do nothing, and we'll think, man, I wasted a whole day. Or we can run through a day and realize, whoa, I wasted a whole day. I just ran, 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 or I drifted. But, Lord, we thank you that you can order our steps. And the Holy Spirit does that. We may end up somewhere we never thought we would be, Lord God. Sin will either direct us or your Holy Spirit will. And we don't want sin to direct us. We don't want our flesh to. So maybe across this house, we want to rededicate ourselves to letting the Holy Spirit direct us throughout that day. And we just symbolize that rededication by just slipping up a hand and say, Lord, direct me. Take me where you want me to be. Let me be sensitive to those you put in my path. And direct me, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord. Now I want to end this by thanking you for Heath, Lord. Thank you for the studying he does. Thank you that as many opportunities as he, as he gets to speak, that he'll always do the study and preparation that he's doing now. And you reward that, Lord God. And we thank you that he's relying on you. Once again, Lord, we want to echo that prayer we did at the beginning for this team in El Salvador, Lord God. I just want to focus uh, not away from the team members, uh, but I do want to focus specifically on Diana, Lord, that you would refresh her body. Uh, it's no coincidence that this is attacking her, Lord God, because she's the leader of this team. They need her. Lord God, uh, we thank you that your Holy Spirit power can come upon her and just bring her a reviver. Lord, on her own, she's going to try it, but she can't. So she needs you, Lord, and she knows that. And Father God, we're not going to allow the enemy to strike the shepherd and let the sheep scatter. Uh, there's a younger team, and you know that. They need guidance. They need direction. They need protection. And Lord, you've chosen to do that through Diana. So we just want to lift her up right now, Lord God. We want to reinforce her right now, Lord. And we want to hear later on that right about this hour, all of them just started feeling better, Lord. Uh, I believe the young man that was getting sick is Cody, Lord God. If I just, you know his name. If I don't, just lift him up, Lord God. Refresh him and just say, man, it came upon me, but it went just as quick as it came because they got work to do, Lord God. And we just trust you and we thank you for your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I thank you guys for coming. It's a beautiful night. Uh, we got plenty of time to fellowship with each other and take a little time with Heath. And we will uh, see you guys Sunday morning. So I love you guys and I thank you for being here.